everyone. Welcome to What's In My Tea, Motivational Mornings with Alita Jury. This morning, we have Dr. Melanie Bell, and we're gonna be talking about empowerment. So over the last few years, everyone has kind of heard of the Great Resignation, which was rebranded as the Great Realignment. And so I just felt that it was an empowerment movement where people were realizing that they weren't necessarily getting what they did, what they deserved in exchange for their, their work and their dedication. Um, and so I thought that Dr. Bell would be a great person to tap on to speak about empowerment. Just a few things about Dr. Bell's greatness here. She is a candidate for president for the Maryland Nurses Association. She is the current vice president for the Maryland Nurses Association, the chair of the membership committee, a nurse consultant for the Health Resources and Services Administration, the past chair of the legislative committee for the Maryland Nurses Association, a visiting associate professor at Chamberlain University, and this year was announced to be the winner of the daily record Maryland Top 100 Women, which is like a huge honor. And it's a very competitive um, like process. So it, I was very happy when she told me that she received that honor. So today we are going to get some golden nuggets from Dr. Bell about empowerment and just learn about her story to get to where, to get from where she was uh, at the beginning of her nursing career to where she is today. And so, how long have you been a nurse? Oh, I just hit 21 years as a nurse uh, as of September 12th, okay. 2022. Okay. And so, uh, I wanted to know if I can retire now, but I guess not. You know, nurses don't get that type of package. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember my date that I took the NCLEX. It was September 12th, 2001, wow. the day after 9-11 hit. So, you can wow. imagine already being nervous um, for taking the boards. And this was my third time my third attempt at taking the NCLEX. And so I was determined uh, to pass the NCLEX and uh, I did it. Nice. Third time is a charm. And so my thought was how I could be out there helping those who are impacted by 9-11 if I already had my nursing license. Um, but you know, our time is our time. That's right. And I did it. That's a golden nugget right there. <laughs> Hashtag our time is our time. Trust the process. Yes, that's right. That's right. And so, you know, the word fail, I saw this a few years ago. Fail means first attempt in learning. And so you have to keep that in your mind. Like just because you, you failed at something um, doesn't know that you're not smart. You know, it just means that it wasn't your time. So keep trying. Yes. So how long have you advocated for patients and how long have you advocated for nurses? I would say that um, for patients, probably since I was 16, okay. uh, when I decided to become a nurse instead of a physician, um, because I wanted to spend more time with the patients. Like, how, how did I know that physicians didn't get to spend the same amount of time that nurses did with their patients? And so I set my uh, journey to becoming a registered nurse. My goal back then was to become a nurse practitioner and, um, and, <laughs> and support women and children in underserved areas. Um, so. When I entered college, I ended up getting a job as a medical records um, technician um, for a well-known um, clinic in Washington, D.C. And then I worked my way up. I got the chance to work directly with the doctors and the patients. Mm -hmm. And it was at that moment that I knew that patients need my voice. Yes. Um, you know, they would call because they were worried or they needed to get in to see the doctor sooner. And uh, I would do things, you know, with the schedule to rearrange so the patients could come get in. I would speak to the doctors about the challenges the patients were having to ensure that they had their time to spend with the patients. You know, also, uh, one of the concerns was the medication. Mm -hmm. Not everyone could afford their medications, um, you know, That's and so when you have to prioritize medications over food, it really becomes an issue. Yeah. Uh, but working alongside the doctors to be the voice of the patient, that's when it started for me. Now, I'll tell you about my defining moment when I knew that being an advocate for patients was very important. Mm -hmm. uh, I took care of a patient at uh, a hospital in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and the patient had uh, cancer, and the patient was going through a surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, the surgery went well. I saw the patient initially for post-op appointments, and this is during my time as a nurse navigator. Mm -hmm. And so a few months gone by, and I wanted to know what happened to the patient. So I get a call one day from a monk, and the monk lets me know that the patient had passed away, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And so, but in the patient's will, he left me flowers. And I thought, oh my goodness, 
someone left me flowers and their will, mm -hmm. that's powerful. It and it let me know that me being an advocate for that patient, me taking the time to spend um, ample amount of hours with the patient to make sure they understood everything that was going on, yeah. that it was very important. Yeah. And so I think that was my truly, um, my defining moment. That's, that's amazing that a patient mm -hmm. thought so much of you mm -hmm. when they were transitioning from this form of life mm -hmm. to leave you uh, something that would impact your life. That's right. And I still have it. That was 2010. And the, I called the plant gym after the patient. Nice. And the plant is in my home and with the family and gym is a part of the family. That's, that's so, so touching. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, and so for, for all of the patients out there, understand that it is a cyclical process. Mm -hmm. We touch your lives and you touch ours as well. You inspire us mm -hmm. to be better people and to be better professionals. So shout out to all of the patients out there. What gives you strength and empowers you? Like how do you, how do you maintain your momentum? Mm -hmm. So my strength comes from within, right? I've always been a driven individual. I look for outcomes that are successful. And so having an inner strength is like being a leader. You know, it's an innate quality. Um, and I believe that we all possess a strength. Um, yeah. Sometimes we don't always tap on our strengths or don't think that we're as strong as we are, yeah. but we truly do have our inner strength that pushes us um, to the levels where we need to be. Yes, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you able to stand in your power when you are surrounded by other powerful people? I know you do a lot of things with legislators mm -hmm. and CEOs and C-suite level executives. Uh, what do you do? Like, what type of mentality do you have to be able to just be present? Right, right. I would say being confident. You know, when you're a confident person, you feel powerful. Yeah. And so you feel that you're on the same playing field as those individuals that you're around. Yeah. Uh, when I did bedside nursing, you know, I considered all of my patients to be VIPs. And so I feel that if you think highly of yourself, um, then you put yourself at a level where you too can be powerful. And so, and then you won't be intimidated by others. Uh, when I worked in the military profession as a civilian, uh, someone told me once, like, did you know that you command the room when you walk in? And I thought, what does that mean? Uh, but I didn't downplay it, right? I accepted it and I continued to add that as one of my power tools uh, in my belt uh, to make sure that I always walked in confidence, that I always walked in and commanded the room, even with just my presence alone, um, that it was warm and welcoming and embracing uh, so that others can can approach me uh, and, and have a best uh, great experience. So I think what was great that you said was like not shrinking yourself. I think a lot of times when we are new to something or it's something that we aren't so confident with, right. we naturally shrink ourselves mm -hmm. because that's our safe place. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about anyone like calling on us to speak. We don't have to worry about like leading any initiatives. And that was one of the things that you said is like, it comes from within, it's, it's a form of leadership. Yes. And I think that, you know, something that I just kind of wanted to add to that was that a lot of times we shrink ourselves because we do not have confidence and our ability to do the prep work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, what I've learned in my journey to leadership and entrepreneurship is that when you do the prep work, mm -hmm. that actually is a form of boosting your self-esteem and your confidence. Mm -hmm. And so that allows you to stand in your confidence. Dr. Bell is able to fill the room with her presence and command the room because she knows who she is yes. and she knows what she knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then helping others to feel confident as well. Yeah. You know, um, just, you know, people are often afraid to ask a question. Yeah. Just ask. Right? Yeah. The only thing someone can tell you is no. Yeah. Um, but don't be afraid to ask. Walk in your confidence. Yeah. Carry that inner strength. And yeah. those things will lead you to success. In your journey as an advocate for nurses and patients, do you see overlap? And which do you think started first? Advocating for nurses or advocating for patients? Okay. And so I do see the overlap. Okay. okay. And, um, you know, I would say advocating for yourself okay. comes first, right? Um, because as the, you know, the cliche goes when you get on the, the aircraft, you know, you put your oxygen mask on first before you try to help others. And so if you don't speak up for yourself, you can't help others. Yes. And others benefit from you speaking up for yourself. 
So as an advocate for myself in college and, you know, just trying to find my way, not having a mentor, um, which is why I'm so big on nursing students having mentors, um, I learned how to speak up for what is, what is right right? Holding people accountable. Yes. Uh, and then that transition into advocating for patients. Yes. And so um, advocating for patients because in the hospitals, you, you see signs that say speak up, right? Yes. And so then I said, well, wait a minute, I'm telling patients to speak up. I need to learn how to speak up for myself. And mm -hmm. so then that transitioned into advocating for nurses and the yes. profession, which yes. has led me to being an advocate. I call myself the voice for the voiceless. Uh, in the Maryland General Assembly, where I'm able to offer testimony on bills yes. in the legislature on nursing yes. and healthcare. And so it's a win-win situation for all. It is, and I just wanted to put a pin there. So if you Google Dr. Bill, you can see a, a number of testimonies that she's provided to increase healthcare access, to increase uh, health equity, and to, re to really just speak up for patients and honor them. And so I wanted you to know that she is on LinkedIn and she is on Instagram. What's your Instagram ha so handle? My Instagram is DNP's Inspire. And so it's D-N-P-Z underscore I-N-S-P-Y-R-E. And there you can find stories of my nursing career over the last few years. Um, and hopefully you'll find some inspiration. And I do, I follow a, a leader here uh, at the Commission for Health. Um, I follow the Nurse Practitioner Group. I follow yes. DNP. Shout out Stacy. Yes. <laughs> DNP. Shout out Dr. McCammy. Yes. And I follow the Black Nurse Collaborative. Shout out to Meaty. Yes. Yes. So in all of those organizations and handles will be mentioned in the caption for these for this video. So please check out all of the profiles that we mentioned because these are all like powerhouses that are really yes. helping to build the next generation of leaders and mm -hmm. nurses. So please make sure you check them out. Right. Um, and see again, she like she see we were just talking about advocating, right? And like speaking for others. This is Dr. Bell's consistently speaking of others and not just for like legislative purposes, but networking, right? Yes. Networking is a form of professional development. Yes. Um, it's a skill. Mm -hmm. And so when you understand the power that you have, empowering others could be mentioning their name when they're not there to speak for themselves yes. as a professional. Right. And I know for a fact, <laughs> anytime I go to any event where Dr. Bell is, she's like literally dragging me along saying, this is, this is Lita Jaree. <laughs> Let me tell you about yes. her. And then she tells me about the other person's business. And shout out to the nurse practitioner group for hosting these type of events oh my gosh. where we're Amazing. able to network. That was Amazing. a wonderful event that you all held in the DC in the DC metropolitan area. We hope that you return because we will definitely be there. Yeah. And if not, we can go to them. Oh you yeah, know, that would be a nice little trip. Group, uh, they host white coats and white coats and cocktails, cocktails yes. annually in Miami. Yes. Um, Stacy Santiago is yes. a nurse practitioner and a longtime friend, and she's done such a wonderful job. Um, with nurse practitioners and getting nurses placed in employment, yeah. especially through COVID. And yes. so um, shout out to you, Stacey. Literally um, saving lives. Yes, Literally. saving lives um, one life at a time. So, yes. Yes, good for you. Um, and, and, and placing food on people's table, right? Yes. She's feeding families, right, by being an employer. So, you know, again, multidimensional, multifaceted, um, just leadership and excellence. Yes, yes, I would agree. Um, and so we're going to move on to our next question. What is your favorite motivational quote? So my favorite motivational quote is something I actually came up with um, back in 2010. And it's on my email signature line. And so it's nursing is a gift that comes from the heart because I truly believe that. Right. Um, it, I was inspired by just working at the bedside with nurses. So, um, it led me to coming up with that quote and I stand by it. Um, I feel that if you if it comes from your heart you do a better job of taking care of others, you know, and that goes back to your why. You know, we often say, remember your why when it comes to nursing. Why did you choose the profession? Yeah. Um, because there's so many professions out there, but but why nursing? And so it's because you like to do um, things for others. Mm -hmm. It's that you have a love for people mm -hmm. and you have a love for families and educating others. And you want to see people have the best outcomes possible yes. um, when it comes to their managing their health care. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, all, all salient points. Mm -hmm. um, and nursing is a gift that comes from the heart. I think that it's important because 
it comes from our heart, but it touches other people's hearts. Yes. Um, but it also touches our hearts. Mm -hmm. It becomes a full, a full cycle. Mm -hmm. And the way that you received that flower from your patient, mm -hmm. that touched your heart. And it motivated you to continue your professional development as a nurse and potentially even inspired personal growth. Right. And so I think that it's just really important to understand the role and the impact that we have mm -hmm. as nurses, mm -hmm. and as healthcare professionals. Uh, what comes to mind when you think about overcoming hard things? Challenge yourself, right? Don't be afraid. Um, you know, nothing worth having is going to come easy. And I think that you should turn a challenge, flip it upside down and turn it into a goal, something that you want to attain. Uh, because if you do that, then you won't see it as fear, but you'll see it as being fearless. And yeah. you're gonna do everything that you can to work towards your goal, yeah. um, whether it's um, writing a paper, whether it's uh, running for office, uh, whether it's uh, learning how to set up a movie set, like Alita's done here, right? She's done a great job. And so, and Alita's like a, a one man band. She does so much. She's a very smart and talented individual. Thank and you. she is the epitome of nurses can do anything. Thank you. Uh, from her nursing expertise as a nurse practitioner, um, from her leadership roles uh, to her being a nurse consultant, I've worked alongside her, uh, to now um, being a talk show host. And so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make sure you follow her yes. at the Commission for Health yes. on Instagram. Yes. Okay. And this is another thing, you know, it really circles back to like mm -hmm. surrounding yourself by positive people. Yes. You know, I think if I, if there was a time in my life where if I would have told somebody, I have a morning talk show, uh, would you like to be on it? And the people that I had in my circle, they would have laughed at me. You know, mm -hmm. now I tell people I have a morning talk show mm -hmm. and I'm doing it. This is Alita's talk show. I'm owning it. I am the audio technician. I am the production assistant. I'm the director. I am wardrobe. Like I am everyone. I do makeup. I do everything. And you know, the people that I'm telling about it, they're embracing me right. and they're supporting me. Mm -hmm. She did not hesitate when I asked her to do this interview. So again, like making sure that you're surrounding yourself by people yes. that empower you. And guys, I just want to, I just want to talk about how blessed I am with the circle of friends that I have. And, and professionals, even people that aren't necessarily friends because maybe we haven't had that time invested as yet. I have people lined up through the month of November mm. to be guests. Excellent. Yeah, this is, this is wonderful. So stay tuned, guys. I go live every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Instagram, and I post my recorded sessions on Fridays. Um, at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please stay tuned. And then we're going to come to our final question. What are the three core values that mean the most to you? Well, this, is a, this, is, this is a tough question uh, because there's so many and I really adore all of them. But I'm going to start off with accountability, right? And I'm going to talk about being accountable, holding yourself accountable yeah. for your actions. Yeah. You should be intentional with everything that you do. Um, you know, this involves um, being holding others accountable as well. Yes. And so, uh, but you can't expect something of someone else if you yeah. can't expect it of yourself. Yes. And so, take care of you first in every way. Yeah. Not just uh, a spa day. Yes. But also holding yourself accountable. Yes. So, I just want to add to that, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes holding yourself accountable can mean doing things in a meaningful way mm -hmm. so that you have more bandwidth. Yes. A lot of times as women, we feel like we have to spread ourselves so thin mm -hmm. as opposed to being intentional. That was something else that you talked about being intentional. Yes. So in order for me to have this talk show, I had to have conversation with my husband and with my children. They're actually here right now. But I had to have conversations with them to say, mommy's going to be recording for a few minutes. Just stay quiet. And then as soon as mommy's done recording, we can get back into our, you know, our, our routine. Right. Um, but this gives me bandwidth to be able to do something that fills me. Mm -hmm. It allows me to connect to other great people and it helps me to raise their brand awareness. And so, um, and I can do it from my home, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not picking and choosing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, again, that, that accountability, right? How did I need this to look in order or for me to execute it? Mm -hmm. how, did, how, how could I bring my vision to life mm -hmm. without betraying myself? That's right. Right. And you're holding yourself accountable yes. to be excellent. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so, because no one else is going to do it for you. Yes. And so, only you know what your bandwidth is. Yes. 
only you know how you want to progress in life yeah. and what your goals are. Yeah. There are people out there that can help you, but you have to put the work in and yes. hold yourself accountable yes. first. And you know, you mentioned, you know, having the conversations with your husband and your children and I can remember being in graduate school. I had to have the conversations with my children. Mommy has to do her homework, just like you have to do your homework. Yeah. And we got through it. Yeah. And here I am today. Wonderful. Yes. So here she is today. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Google her. Boop. Um, and so um, we are going to post uh, a few Instagram handles beneath this video. Uh, DNP Inspires yes. uh, mm -hmm. at, the, at the Nurse Practitioner Group, the Black Nurse Collaborative, and then DMPs of Color. Yes. Okay, and so I'm just going to have Dr. Bell briefly speak about DMPs of Color and the Black Nurse Collaborative. Right. But before we go there, I'm going to let you know my other core values. Okay, okay. go ahead. Oh, so uh, respect, right? <laughs> So, and, th and that's the thing, I'm holding myself accountable yes. um, for what uh, Alita asked me. Yeah. And so, uh, respect. So you have to respect yourself and others, right? Yes. If you don't have any self-respect, you definitely won't know how to respect others. And so, um, once you do that, you foster um, better relationships yes. with people. Um, you let them know that you have their best interests at heart. Yeah. And so, um, respect. Yeah, that's another big one. Yeah. And that's in the, the core values for the Maryland Nurses Association also. Um, the last one would be compassion, yeah. right? And nurses are compassionate and caring and kind people. Yes. You know, a, a part of that um, compassion is the word passion. And I mentioned earlier, like knowing your why. Yeah. And so um, when you focus on your why, the passion will show through time after time. Yeah. And continue to employ that every day in everything that you do. Yeah. 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 So... You wanted to know about DMPs of yes, color, right? Please, All right. Please. And so, uh, DMPs of color is a um, a group started, an organization rather, started by Dr. McCammy, Danielle McCammy, who is mm -hmm. a um, advanced um, practicing nurse, mm -hmm. and now she's a dean at John Hopkins University. So yes. shout out to Dr. McCammy. Yeah, shout out. Um, but she created a space for um, other DMPs like myself yes. um, who needed that support because we didn't see that support. In our uh, in our profession mm. um, to help support nurses of color, and mm. so she's done a wonderful job. Wonderful. You can follow her at uh, DMPs of Color on Instagram. She's yes. actually having a convention yes. October twenty first through yes. the twenty third, and uh, during the convention there'll be time for a happy hour. There'll yes. be um, educational sessions. Yes. There's a gala at the end of the night, yes. starting at 7 p.m. on yes. the 22nd, and then on the 23rd, she has other events. So, uh, DMPs of Color, you can check her out also, Dr. McCammy, on uh, on LinkedIn, yes. and, and follow her. Yes. Uh, even if you're not able to attend this session, uh, follow her and see what you can gain um, from that experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the Black Nurse Collaborative. Yes. So the Black Nurse Collaborative is a, a, a group, an or, I'm sorry, an organization uh, started by Meedy Bardinelli, um, who is a nursing leader in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And uh, the BMC, BNC has a, a mission um, to bring together nursing experts um, throughout the uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area um, with varying skills and competencies. We are all subject matter experts in our own in our own way um, from renal um, disease um, up to midwifery to critical care to nurse consultants to um, finance um, focused nurses like Alita. Yes. <laughs> Where the money resides. That's right. right? That's, that's right. That, all know, about my money. All about the money. <laughs> and all about making sure that organizations are spending money yes, appropriately because sound. everyone has a fiduciary responsibility. That's right. When it comes to managing a budget and an organization. And listen, accountability, right? That points yes. back to accountability. Yes. How can you manage someone else's finances? effectively if you don't know how to manage your own absolutely that's a whole word absolutely and so um you know uh, being intentional about the bnc is being intentional about building networks of nurses and um with a common goal and uplifting each other and being there to support once again black nurses and who didn't always have that support um throughout their nursing career um yes. to empower them um, and create tangible support for members to join and um, propel um, towards excellence. So the Black Nursing Collaborative is all about nursing excellence. And again, you can follow the Black Nurse Collaborative at the Black Nurse Collaborative on Instagram.
Wonderful. Yes. So mm -hmm. thank you for speaking about all of these great organizations, the work that they're doing. Uh, we really hope to have you back at some point in the future yes. so that we can get updates and we can see what else you're doing and what what you will do this legislative session. Oh, I, I love I love your work when it comes yes. to like hearing your testimonies and understanding like how you're able to move the needle forward. Like this is how you know where we work for a certain entity mm -hmm. <laughs> moving the needle forward. If you caught what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And I will say, you know. That just goes to show you, once again, that nurses can do everything. Yes. Right? We can testify. Yes. We can be finance directors. Yes. We can be nurses. I was a nurse for Miss America, which was yes. a great experience. That was and cool. so when you have that drive, that passion um, to do things and you speak into existence um, what you want for your life, um, that manifestation, yes. right? it comes yes. to fruition. It and comes. so um, be patient with yourself. Yes. Don't rush everything. You know, yes. I'm so proud of my nursepreneurs, Alita, Meaty, uh, Dr. McCammy, you know, all nursepreneurs who have just said, I'm going to take what I see as the problem and come up with a solution to improving nursing across the continuum and providing the support that nurses need uh, so that they can be successful. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. He has me blushing on my own talk show, y'all. So I'm going to have a toast. We're going to yes. toast to... What's in our tea? Motivational mornings with the leader jury. And what's in our tea this morning is excellence. Hey, sprinkle it in. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Remember, Tuesday mornings, we live stream at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Times, and recorded sessions will be posted on Fridays to Instagram and YouTube. Stay healthy and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Okay. You ready? <laughs> right. No, stop it for a minute. Okay. Can you edit? Yeah. Are you using this too? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I have all types of software. Okay. You'd never believe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. You ready? That's everything. I do. I do. I really do. Probably have like burnt CDs or mixtapes in my in my car oh my somewhere. Gosh. Okay. It's too funny. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. And action. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What's in My Tea Motivational Mornings with Alita Jury. Boop. Uh, good morning, and this morning, cut, mm -mm, too much. <laughs> you want to start though? No, uh, you got to, we keep going. I'll okay. just cut it and splice it. Okay. We'll have some bloopers. <laughs> People love bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, you ready? Mm -hmm. And action. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What's in My Tea, Motivational Mornings with Alita Jury. This morning... Please, don't say acting, okay? Okay. Go ahead, Reese. You can pop on. Hi. We have our our, our cameraman, our production assistant. What? What yes. else? Oh my gosh. Camera girl. Yes. I like cameras. She makes sure that all the angles are right. Yes. <laughs> you know, take the picture, pose. You know, that Reese. She hooked us up. Yes, so. she did. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Reese. You gonna say bye? Bye. Bye. <laughs>